Hello and welcome back to my channel for a Doctor Who collection update. In this video I'm going to be talking about everything I've added to my collection in the past month or so. Partly because there's quite a lot of stuff here that I thought would interest people and partly because I've just recently upgraded my lighting setup and want to give it a quick test run to see how it looks. Hopefully there is a notable difference in quality. If you can notice that please do let me know in the comments that would be very, very helpful indeed. But otherwise, let's get on to the first few things I've got to talk about today, which are a few issues of Doctor Who magazine. So first up, we have issue 564, which is a bit of a uh, Paul McGann themed issue. Lots of content in here to do with the TV movie, which turned 25 years old in May. Uh, so lots to do with the Eighth Doctor. Very, very nice indeed. And then from May, we have issue 565, which was Seventh Doctor themed, and specifically uh, season 24, because the season 24 box set, if I can just find it, there it is, is out, well, at the time of release of this magazine, it was about a month away. At the time of recording, it's just a few days now. So I'm very much looking forward to receiving that in the post, hopefully this weekend. And yeah, as I say, there's lots of Seventh Doctor themed content in here and articles and things to do with uh, that era. Uh, in both these issues, a bit of a drought of uh, new series content, unfortunately, which has been a bit of an issue with Doctor Who magazine recently when the show's been off air. A lot of classic series content, not much to do with the current era, sadly. But I think that's been remedied a little bit with the most recent issue, which actually on the day of recording was meant to come out today, but I haven't yet received my subscription copy, that's why it's not in the video. But there's an interview with Jodie Whittaker and Mandip Gill in that issue, which I'm very much looking forward to read when my subscription copy does eventually turn up. Alongside those two regular issues, we have the most recent Doctor Who magazine special edition, Writing Doctor Who, which I also recently read. And this was right up my street, actually, because as you might know, it's my aspiration to write for television one day, hopefully, maybe even for Doctor Who in some form or another. And there's a lot of great stuff in here to do with the different writers, production teams and showrunners and their different approaches to writing the show over the years. Uh, so some very interesting stuff. Again, quite classic series heavy, not a lot of new series stuff in there, which is a shame, but a worthwhile read nevertheless. And then to bring us right up to date, we have the most recent Doctor Who Chronicles bookazine focusing on 1975, Tom Baker's first full year in the role. I just got this yesterday. I think it's only been released in the past week or so at the time of recording and I haven't had the chance to read it yet. I've just flicked through but I'm expecting great great things because the first one about 1965 was just so great at immersing you in that area. You know, as someone who wasn't alive back in 65 or 75 or throughout the classic era as a whole, these bookazines do a really good job at immersing you in those eras. So I'm very much looking forward to reading that one when I get the chance. Next up, we have something else I got in May, although it was actually a birthday present for me last year in August. It was a pre-order. It is, of course, the long-awaited return of Christopher Eccleston's The Royal Night Doctor for Big Finish in Ravagers, the first box set for the Ninth Doctor Adventures. Now I covered this in a previous video a little bit, I think it was my Q&A. These stories weren't quite to my taste sadly. I mean Chris Freckleston does a really great job back in the role, it's great to hear him again. But in terms of the stories themselves, I don't know, I just felt they were quite ambitious on the one hand but also strangely and sort of ironically they felt quite routine as well. Uh, very much like you know, the type of Doctor Who story or big finish box set you might have heard before. So a bit of a mixed bag, but as I say, it's great to hear Eccleston back in the role and I'm definitely looking forward to the other box sets in the range, which I also got as part of that present as a pre-order. I'm looking forward to seeing the Cybermen, you know, and Macbeth and whatever else is to come. I feel those stories will push the boundaries out a little bit more. It was quite a safe box set, you know, but I think there's some great stuff to come in the future, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Sticking with the Ninth Doctor theme, there's something I got a little bit more recently, which was to replace this, my complete first series DVD, which I'm not sure I've ever showed off on the channel before, but uh, it's falling apart. There's a piece of plastic missing on this kind of slip casey bit, and then the box set itself is very worn and battered. Obviously a, a really treasured item in the collection, not something I'll ever get rid of for good, but in terms of actually being able to watch series one, the discs in here 
are pretty knackered. Uh, they've got scratches all over them from years of use. And I got this back in 2008, I think, the year I became a fan. So it's needed replacing for quite a few years now. There's just one small problem. I didn't get the Series 1 Steelbook when it was originally released, and it now goes for silly, silly money. There has always been an alternative, and I've sort of held off doing this just because, you know, I sort of hoped, I guess, in vain that the Series 1 Steelbook might come down in price or be re-released or something. But then when I saw it was going a bit cheaper than usual in the Amazon Prime Day sale, I couldn't resist. It is the Series 1 Blu-ray standard release, and to be fair, that's a really nice cover, and this is a really nice item, you know, it's thinner than the original box sets, uh, but it still feels and looks really, really nice, and it's great to have Series 1 available to watch again. Obviously, you know, Series 1 to 12 are all available to watch on iPlayer, but I like to make a point of using the discs uh, to watch them this sort of old-fashioned way when I can. So for that reason, I haven't actually watched any of Series 1 in ages, so I'm really looking forward to watching these stories again now that I've got them on Blu-ray at last, and now that I actually have workable discs to watch them on. Next up, we have something I picked up in Forbidden Planet Liverpool recently, uh, sort of just on a whim. Basically, I was there for the day, I visited some of the locations from Series 13 filming as part of that day, and also I happened to walk past Forbidden Planet, I went inside, and I looked at the Doctor Who range, and to be fair, you know, there wasn't a lot there, but there was one thing in particular which stuck out to me and that was this little pin badge here, uh, which is obviously Ace's name. I believe she wears it in the show, but to be honest, Ace wears so many badges, so I, I could be getting that wrong. But it's a really nice piece, a little enamel badge, I think, uh, and just feels and looks really, really great. And I've just got this on display with my Ace figure currently. I don't really wear badges, and I don't really have anything else like this in the collection already. The last time I sort of got Doctor Who badges would have been with Talk to Adventures magazine as part of the free gifts, you know, so uh, this is a bit of a departure, but a very nice piece. And when I saw it in the shop, I couldn't resist picking it up. And as I say, it looks really, really great on display. Next, we have a figure from yesteryear, which I never got. It is Novice Haim, originally released, I believe, in 2007 as part of the Series 2 assortment. It is the Series 2 variant, because there is a Series 3 one as well, which I do have. But this uh, Sister of Planitude white nun outfits, robe, whatever you want to call it, variants, is one that I never got round to picking up. Uh, you might be able to spot some little blue tack bits on her feet, which I've had to put on there just to make her stand up properly because uh, she's sort of wearing heels. Strange, I don't know if you can see there. And yeah, a really nice figure actually, especially when on the backing card. Uh, I think this is one of the, the best sort of figure packaging combos we've had. And you know, just look how much that pops with the blue and the orange and the white. I think it looks really, really cool. So a very welcome addition to my collection. Uh, she looks great alongside my other Series 2 figures and especially ones from New Earth, you know, like the Tenth Doctor and Rose and Chip and Destroy Cassandra, God bless her. Yeah, a really nice figure. Not the most demanded character to have a figure, but a nice figure nevertheless and a great addition to my figure collection. And finally, from figures to figurines, we have a couple of issues of the Doctor Who figurine collection, which I picked up recently as part of the Forbidden Planet sale. So we have part 189, which is Snowman from the Snowmen. And then we have the next issue along, part 190, which is Ashad the Lone Cyberman. Now, I'm not a big collector of the figurine collection. I don't get the issues as they come out and I've only got a handful of figures from the range overall, but these two were just $5.99, and when I saw that price, and saw these two characters in particular, you know, the Snowman, which is a, a really cool-looking sort of Christmas-themed figure, and then obviously Ashad from Series 12, one of the, the best characters from that series. When I saw those for the price, I just couldn't resist. And I thought, just to finish off, I'd do a quick unboxing of them too, because they just arrived today, and I haven't actually opened them yet, as you can probably see. So first up, the snowman. Now, as I say, this is a really cool looking figure. It sort of doubles, I think, as a Christmas decoration almost, if you look at that there. And there we have it. And yeah, it's very nice in hand. Got a very nice texture to it and definitely is going to make a really great display piece. And I can just picture it alongside my Christmas tree at Christmas as well. It's going to make a 
a really nice Christmas decoration too. So that's the snowman, let's move on to Ashad. So Ashad, the lone Cyberman, and this packaging seems to be slightly different from the last one. There we go, open to the top there. Uh, get the magazine out of the way. I do really like the uh, sort of gold they've used for the logo now instead of the, the white. It looks really, really nice in my opinion. I haven't got any issues for a while actually. I think the last one I got was, oh gosh, the, the Lynn Dalek I think from Resolution. So it's uh, nice to have some more up-to-date ones. And as I say, Ashad obviously is a, a fantastic character. One of those characters you kind of just wish, you know, character options would make a figure of because it would work so, so well. And uh, yeah, he's a really, really unique, really great design. And there we have him. And wow, what a fantastic figure this is. So much detail. Uh, the sort of rusty metal effect is really cool as well. I suppose it sort of helps that he actually is made from metal. Yes, yeah, so, so much detail on this. I can't wait to have a, a closer look at it after I finish making this. And he's going to look really, really great alongside my other uh, 13th Doctor figurines. Because uh, most of the ones I have got are actually 13th Doctor characters, you know, characters that aren't available in the, the five inch range. So that's going to look really, really awesome on display. And there we have it. Everything I've discussed today all back into one frame. Gosh, that took some organising. Do let me know your thoughts on these products, if you've picked any of them up, or anything else you've picked up recently in terms of, you know, new Doctor Who releases or old ones. Uh, do let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you've got to say. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye for now. <laughs>